A while back I had the opportunity to review the Rajantech Eidos 92mm CPU cooler. All in all, that small scale cooler did fairly well at providing a simple, small scale aftermarket cooling solution for a user on a limited budget. Now enters the Eidos' big brother, the Rajantech Aeroboss. This beefy cooling solution dwarfs both the Eidos as well as my Cooler Master Hyper T4 in stature. However, does its behemoth size translate well into actual cooling performance? Let's find out. The Rajantech Aeroboss comes equipped with a nickel copper base plate, which then disperses its heat into the aluminum fins via six 6mm copper heat pipes. The CPU cooler comes in at 808 grams in weight with its dimensions of 140 millimeters in width, 110.5 millimeters in depth, and 160 millimeters in height. And to cool this massive array of fins, Rajantech includes a slim 140 millimeter PWM fan. Thankfully, the size of the cooler is really a non-issue when it comes to RAM clearance. My Trident Z memory with their tall heatsinks fit snugly under the Airboss when it was installed. Speaking of installation, the Airboss is a relatively painless install process. Rajantech includes mounting hardware for most AMD and Intel sockets with a schematic that will help you install it along the way. The only difficulty I ran into was when I had to use the included long screwdriver to mount the cooler itself, since you have to thread the screwdriver through the cooler to have access to one of the mounting holes. Unfortunately, because of the way my motherboard is laid out, I couldn't access the hole from underneath the cooler to actually put the screw in place and had to instead put the screw through the cooler, which invariably led to me dropping and losing the screw several times before finally getting it right. It may be a unique problem that I encountered, again due to my motherboard, but I slightly wish the screwdriver was magnetic so that I wouldn't have to drop my screw so many times. The 140mm fan can either be installed with the included fan clips, but also the optional anti-vibration rubber grommets that help subdue movement and noise. Unfortunately, the Aeroboss suffers from the same design flaw as the Eidos in this regard, with the thin aluminum fans being easily flexed and bent by the installation and removal of the grommets, causing some damage anytime you need to adjust or remove the fan. Regardless, with the 140mm fan installed, it was rather quiet only hitting 47 decibels on the most grueling of stress tests. With the Aeroboss and fan installed, it then came to testing the cooler to see how well it holds up. I put the Aeroboss up against my Cooler Master Hyper T4 in a few different scenarios. All of the tests were run with my Intel Core i7-6700K overclocked to 4.4GHz at stock voltage. Up first was the Ada64 stress test, which was run for 10 minutes. The higher ambient temperature at the time of testing put the Aeroboss at a slight disadvantage, both in this result but also moving forward. But if you compensate for that temperature difference, the Aeroboss and T4 are nearly identical in cooling performance. The second test was a bout of the ASUS ROG RealBench 15 minute stress test. Again, the Aeroboss and T4 share very similar average temperatures despite the ambient room difference. After those two stress tests, it was time for a more typical scenario with gaming rounds of Just Cause 3 and Ashes of the Singularity. For Just Cause 3, the Aeroboss had a much higher peak temperature but lower average even with a 2 degree room temperature disadvantage. And Ashes of the Singularity is the same result with the high temperature being a few degrees more but the average being overall a lower mark. Coming to a conclusion, the Rajantech Aeroboss did a pretty good job of keeping my CPU cool. It very easily matched the performance of one of the more popular aftermarket CPU coolers in my Hyper T4 in higher ambient temperatures. However, it seems like the Aeroboss has more things that need to be considered before I could just outright recommend it to you. The main thing with the Aeroboss is its size. The overall width and height of the cooler could be a problem for some chassis or some RAM profiles. Another consideration for the Aeroboss is price. In the US, it's retailing for around $43 on Newegg, while the Hyper T4 and Hyper 212 Evo are hovering closer to the $25 to $30 mark. And while you may indeed get better cooling performance by a couple degrees Celsius with the Aeroboss, those extra couple of degrees likely won't mean much to the average person who modestly over, who's modestly overclocking or not even overclocking at all, and don't justify its higher price tag for most. In South Africa, the pricing is a bit better with the Aeroboss coming below the 212 EVO by 2 Rand and only coming above the Hyper T4 by 41 Rand. That minuscule difference in price makes the Aeroboss an attractive option with its better cooling performance. Just make sure you measure out how much space you have in your case before clicking the buy button. 
And with that conclusion, I'd like to thank Wootware for sponsoring this video on the Rajantec Airboss CPU cooler. Wootware is the only place in South Africa where you can pick up Rajantec coolers. In addition to Rajantec, they carry a whole host of other well-priced items that you may need for any computer build you may be doing, including a large variety of the new GTX 1070 and 1080 GPUs. Their customer service is top of the line and will ensure you leave Wootware feeling satisfied. So head on over to wootware.co.za to wood up your life. And that wraps it up for this video on the Rajantech Airboss 140mm CPU cooler. Like this video if you found it helpful, dislike it if you disagree with my conclusions. You can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my tech related content and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.